If you open up at Exodus chapter 20, you will find this section, which is known as the Ten Commandments, which also includes in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything that's in them. Right. So you'll find that Exodus chapter 20 is a prime text when we deal with the age of the earth or the creation issue or how quickly or how much time you've got to create something. Uh, but it, what, what most people miss is that Exodus chapter 20 starts with verse 1 and it says, the Lord spoke these words. Now, as Glenn said, he believes the Bible is the word of God. Diane believes the Bible is the word of God. But yet you need to do a study to check. Uh, uh, is this just a creation research opinion? Is that our opinion about the Bible? No, you'll find it self substantive because over and over again, you find statements like Exodus 21. The Lord spoke the following. Now, what you find is a, a set of Ten Commandments, and one of them is you won't tell lies. Now, can you imagine Moses giving us, because Moses is the guy whose name is associated with the Ten Commandments, Moses giving us a set of Ten Commandments, one of which is thou shalt not lie. And the introduction to the chapter is God spoke these words, and if it wasn't true, the whole chapter is a lie. So all of a sudden you end up with a real internal conundrum unless you read it the way it says. By the time you get through Isaiah and the prophets, you find them over and over again saying, the word of the Lord came to me saying, right? Now you look at this, is this an angel speaking? No, this at the very least is the angel of the Lord or better still, this is Jesus Christ who is the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Right. So you find consistently from cover to cover the biblical teaching on what it is. It is the word of the Lord who came and he spoke. Now, you'll find that Paul sometimes says, uh, but this is my opinion. Right. And he bases it on X, Y and Z and he tells you. So you will find it includes statements from non-Christians where Paul says, even as your own poets have said. Right. But nevertheless, the whole of the biblical picture is here's how you should think. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. So having been involved in education, in geology, and this is where our situation is 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 most effective and most, well, the, the non-Christians think we are the most antagonistic people on the planet. Let me remind you of a statement I made just a few weeks ago. In education, we have a worldview. If you want to see the worldview, go to Port Arthur, the criminal um prison where Australia's ban on guns and that began with a shooting. But inside you will find a classroom situation, which was really for church, where people sat in separate isolated containers in the same sort of desk and they all heard exactly the same thing. Now, the man who invented the classroom system where you sat at desk, you all have the same teacher, you're all the same age, you do the same correction, was the man who designed the penitentiary system of dealing with Australia's convicts. Okay, so there's a worldview here. We must, as the government, get them in, maybe with no knowledge, maybe with the wrong knowledge, but they must be converted to our worldview. <clears throat> so by the time you finish a modern Western education system, it is so pro-government. It is so pro. We must sing the national anthem. We must have this attitude about the Queen or that attitude about Aborigines or this attitude about the age of the earth. Can I warn you? Education is the biggest producer of worldviews. And at the moment, if you teach the kids, they've been here in Australia for 65,000 years. They will leave that system, not questioning you because they don't have enough knowledge, not challenging the scientists because they don't even know which scientists to challenge. They will leave with a worldview that's anti-biblical. How do I know that? Well, I got a question the other day about an mm -hmm. Aboriginal pastor who was involved in education, but he was teaching them the Aborigine had been in Australia for 65,000 years. Sorry, he had a non-Christian white man's worldview because Aborigines don't have concepts of time like that at all. So when we have a look, there's one other aspect. The penitentiary system was designed to sort of re-educate, refashion, rechange discipline, all with the one set of rules, all with the one set of aims, but all based on one bit of philosophy today. You see, if you have a look at classroom discipline today, you'll find it's basically, hey, man is not a sinner. 
man is a neutral block into which you put the best thoughts that you can gather from your society uh, chosen by uh, whoever the leaders are at the time in science. Oh, science, by the way, read the Science Teacher's Journal. Science is any naturalistic explanation without reference to God. So you go through, you get your master's degree, your PhD, you have been totally indoctrinated in evolutionary atheism. Can I warn you teachers that are out there, you need to check where do you think words come from? Doesn't matter how you spell something. Why, why do we have grammar? Where do we get language from? Because all of the answers are basically designed to leave God out, not just science, but in art, but in the whole lot. Our biggest issue that's going on here, we need to challenge the worldview of the pagans in everything. And yes, I'd encourage you, make sure you don't see anything wrong with homeschooling because that's what Adam and Eve did. Ah, train up your children the way they should grow is not given to an education system. It's given to the parents in that community. Can I encourage you to actually think through your worldview? Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. And yes, that was a real challenge to yours truly, John Mackay, who got involved in an awful lot of education 